Hey guys, CloudWolf here, and I'm back today with kind of an update to my practical math data pack. I'm in 1.15 because I'm going to be working on some 1.15 stuff since it's coming out soon. And uh, yeah, so this is how to calculate the distance between two entities. So if I want to figure out how many blocks are between them diagonally, I can do execute as at e type equals pig at at e type equals cow run function function math fast fast slash e dst and i do that and if i look at the output math out the entity has a distance of 19.10 fast uh, when I say w there's a set of functions and I'll go over how it works, but basically fast e distance gives you two decimal points, but it's very fast. It's pretty much pretty accurate. It calculates the uh, triangles hypotenuse and uh, let's see. So if we want to give it another example, we'll just do one more example before we go over how to make it. We can just do a given triangle that we 100% know is right. So one, two, th one, two, three, four by one, two, three. Okay, so I made a real three, four, five triangle, um, and this is gives you five exactly. So I guess I placed them pretty well on that block. So it's pretty simple how it works, but um, it first it uses the distance formula. So it does the square root of x two minus x one squared minus y two minus y one squared just like that it does that formula um and doing that is a little bit harder than you think so i guess i'll cover how that works and how to use this data pack because i did add some functions to it that you can mess around with if you want um so let's see data i'm, I'm going to be expanding this but only when i feel like i need it for example i needed this distance function for this server so let's see Okay, so these are all your functions to work with. Uh, square root does the same thing as fast square root at the moment. I'm going. I'm working on a more robust square root, but I'll go over that because that's important. And e distance, I believe that non fast e distance is a little bit different how it works. Um, but you can just go like this, and this one actually takes it. It's counterintuitive because. Fast e distance takes more commands, but non fast e distance takes less commands. They both take a, st a static amount of commands, which is nice, and that's why I like the fast square root because it's a static amount of commands. But non fast e distance does a different method that's less efficient, but kind of more accurate uh, as you move things further apart. So it's going to hold more close to the real answer if you uh, have objects further apart. And I'll probably modify it eventually to use the square root instead of the current method it's using. It also, uh, yeah, it that's pretty much the main difference. And I feel like sometimes I should open Sublime before the actual, uh, before the video because it takes so long to open it the first time. Uh, anyways, yeah, so... There's two methods going in play here, so we'll talk about them since we have some time. So, these are all two-dimensional distance, by the way. So, we have a triangle, right? And then we have two legs of the triangle, okay? And according to trig, trigonometry, all right, this... Uh, the angle over the length of this divided by the hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to the sine of the angle here, the angle of this, which is theta. So sine of theta equals O over H, right? Or in this case, we'll call it OX and we'll call it HD because it's kind of the distance, okay? So we can actually calculate the distance just using the sine, which seems like it'd be harder, but it's actually easier because in my previous video, I showed that we can get the sine of theta very quickly. And I adjusted the sine functions in the trig folder to be a little bit different. So if you use this data pack, make sure you update what you used for them. But this is basically the final form of them uh, for now, or this is how they will always be. If I change what the functions do, they'll still do the same thing. So trig slash 
fast slash sign of ry is going to give me uh, the return of the sign of the angle. Uh, let me see what direction am I looking. So, oh, I didn't mean to add the cow and the pig. <laughs> okay. If I just do this, it'll give me the three digits of sign. And the reason I added fast and non-fast is because non-fast is always going to ask, typically, is going to either take longer or ask for how many digits you want. So it, I basically made the sign take less commands. It takes four commands now instead of eight or six. I think it was six. And it gives you the sign accurately. But... Um, if you don't, if you want to, you can use the sign of ry, and it'll actually give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits. Or you can modify it by doing scoreboard player set at s math in, and I can num hit say how many digits I want. So I want four digits. I do that right before, and now it gives me four digits, just like that. So the non fast is uh, you set the digits. So yeah, basically all we do is we summon an area effect cloud, make it rotate the same way that the player is, and position that coordinate 0, 0, 0, except one forward using this. When you summon it, you summon it one forward, okay? And when you summon it one forward, that essentially makes D equal to, so sine of theta now becomes X over 1 instead of D which then allows it to be x, and you grab the x-coordinate. I'm just really fast going over this. I have a video on it. Um, so with that, we can easily get sign using that function. So we just make the, you execute as the pig facing the cow, grab the sign of it. Then you divide the x displacement by the sign of it. And then you have a special case for if it's not a triangle. So if these guys are directly in front of each other, then you have a special case. Or if these guys are directly in front of each other the other way. So that's the non-fast e distance. So we'll take a look at how that works exactly. Uh, all this, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Non-fast e distance that does not use the, um, whatever. Anyways, so it executes facing the, it's basically going to face the pig because at S is the pig, but you're at the cow and you're going to run the fast sign, which gives you three digits of sign. Then you're going to save that number. And then we're going to grab the X coordinate of the pig. And then you're going to grab the X coordinate of the cow and you're going to subtract them. This is just to set it equal to the output equal to the x distance or the z distance based on whether uh, sine was zero. So if sine was zero, then the answer is just the z distance. So you grab the z coordinates, but uh, otherwise you just treat it normally. So you subtract the, uh, you take the end minus the initial right here. This is x2 minus x1. And then you divide that x by the sine of theta, which is the thing we saved all the way up here. So once we do that, um, that's it. And then this just makes sure that if it's negative, make it positive. And that gives you the distance, which is pretty good. But there is a problem. You run to some inefficiencies with the fact that this number here, the uh, so if I do x over or a, a over b, right? And I want my answer to have uh, one, zero, 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 like at least two digits, right? That means that the top number a has to be, uh, 1000 times bigger than B. Okay. And now if we want B to be accurate, we need B to have quite a bit of digits as well. And with sign, we like B having three digits. So that means that a has to be 100 times 1,000, which means that we need that many digits on A, which is a big number. So if a player is at the coordinates, let's say you are standing at X equals uh, 3,000, and you try and do this, 3,000 times 10,000 is going to be a very big number. Yikes, right? And there is a limit to what you can put on the scale, and there's a limit to what you can save to a scoreboard. So eventually you could hit the limits very quickly with this method, which is why I had to come up with another method, um, because this division thing is kind of annoying. So um, that's why I came up with the fast. So fast is very cool. As I said, um, there was one solution that I did find that helps, and that's using inverse. So if I instead of going A divided by B, I do 
a times one over b it can help give me a get a little bit better but i lose a little bit of resolution in the because i'm dividing and you're losing some digits so it's a little bit better in terms of like how many how far out you can go before it starts messing up because your a is too big um but it's not as good as the other answer so the other answer is to actually figure out how to do this square root thing so the square root thing is kind of complicated um, there's so many ways to calculate square root um, so we're going to prep for the square root first and then I'll go over what the square root is. So the distance is going to be we get x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. Um, so this just takes the, uh, uh, let's look at e distance because e is the one that I showed with the entity. You can do this with scoreboards, but you have to use four inputs and it's annoying. This just preps the four inputs for you already. So it gets the four inputs x2, x1, z1, x2, z2, and then it does x2 my, minus x1 and z2 minus z1, okay? Then what we do is we do uh, whatever that answer was from this subtraction, because it gets saved to a single score, you multiply it by itself, and you multiply the other one by itself, and then you add the two together. So now you need to figure out what the square root is. So I load the number back onto the input, and I throw it into the fast square root. Um, I also make sure, so if the number is bigger than 214,748, which is pretty large, so if the distance between the two entities is larger than that number, then it will throw an error, um, which is pretty freaking big, 214,748 blocks apart. Um, or at least, sorry, not apart. Uh, the, in, the thing on the inside gets to be that big, which means that the thing on the outside was... A little bit less, but not, but pretty, pretty large still. I tested it. It's, it's well out of 32 chunks between them. I mean, 32 chunk render distance between them. Um, so then we throw it into the fast square root. And I have two commands here just for errors because I like to know if there's an error. Uh, this is the fast square root using the Newton Raphson four iteration approach. So Newton Raphson is a method uh, where you do uh, a is equal a. B is equal to guess divided by uh, A, and A is equal to A plus B divided by 2. So this is just a way of like inching your way, because with square root, you're trying to see X times X is equal to Y. So what value is X? You're trying to figure out what value X is, and it's pretty hard to actually do that. So there's a lot of methods where you basically say, is so here's your real value right um so you make a guess here and you check with the function and the function tells you well you should probably go to the left so you move this guy over to the left and now you're here and you're like well you're not really quite close that close so let's move to the left again and now you're here and that's sometimes where you end up and sometimes you end up right on the number uh well close enough to the number to be considered the number and sometimes you're a little bit off and that's just how based on how many times you iterate so first i'm here then i'm here then I'm here, then I'm here, then I'm here, and, I, and I, maybe I stop there because I think that's good enough or that's how many iterations I do. So this is doing a set number of iterations, which allows me to know how many functions, how many commands are being played. So it's always the same amount of commands. So we multiply the input by 1, 10,000 because the square root of 10,000 is 100. So our answer is going to have two extra decimal places after it. Um, you have to always multiply by numbers that are square roots to become tens. Uh, if I do the, if I try and multiply it by ten, then the answer is going to be way off. Um, so you make an initial guess, which isn't really important as long as it's a number fairly close to what you would expect most of the numbers to be. So you know, twelve blocks, aka one thousand two hundred fifty-five, is pretty good. I mean, for numbers that are between zero and twenty-four, it'll be really accurate. But when you start getting like super big numbers, then it starts to become less accurate. Um, so we just run four iterations, and I picked this approach because the iterations are really easy to make. They This is one iteration, just these four commands. So temp is our B, and out is our A, because it will eventually be thrown out. So the B is equal to whatever your input is, right? And then your the B is equal to the input number, and you divide that number by A. That's literally the first set of the iteration. The next is your A is added to with the temp. That does this guy up here. 
and then this guy up here is divided by two. And that's it. And then you just repeat these four commands however many times. This is first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, fourth iteration. If you want to be more accurate, you can throw another, I could add four more of these and it'd be more accurate, but I think there's better algorithms if you're going to go with more commands. This is very little commands. So in the end, it gives you the square root. So if I do scoreboard player set at s math in 36, what's the square root of 36? Uh, math fast square root. A, hey, it's 6.00. That's what the output is. Uh, the reason I add it as make it like 600 is because, you know, your answer, maybe you want the decimal places because you're saving it into a coordinate of an entity. Uh, we can also do the square root of 40, uh, 144. And we know that's 12. But if we do the square root of something like 400, it should give us 20. Yep. So it's pretty good. I mean, obviously, you'd want to check to see if it's something you want to use because it's not 100% accurate. If I do the square root of uh, 2, uh, it gives you 1.49, uh, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, and uh, if I do, let's see, the square root of 3, you get 1.77, which is close but not exactly what it should be. Um, because again, this is just estimating. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, first you calculate the, you subtract the coordinates, then you square root it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Once you have a square root function, everything is easy. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.